What's up guys? Welcome back to my personal finance channel. My name is Kyle Pepe, and today I'm going to be talking about IRAs, I guess Roth and traditional and just sort of giving you general overviews, at least how I understand it. If I misunderstand it, well I apologize in advance, but don't, don't treat this as like tax advice or financial advice or anything like that. I'm just going to tell you sort of my situation, what I like to do um, and that stuff. Now we're not really going to get into 401ks because Technically, that is from your employer. Now, if you are self-employed, you can, in theory, do like a solo 401k, uh, which is actually kind of an interesting situation because you can actually contribute more than what an individual can typically contribute to a 401k because you're the employer and the employee. Point is, we'll, 401ks, maybe we'll do a different video on, but IRAs, Roth, traditional, let's get into it. Now, real quick before we jump into them, if you enjoy the content or you check out other videos on the channel, please give them a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, it would really help me out. I would really appreciate it. But let's get on with Roth versus traditional IRAs. All right, so I personally absolutely love Roth IRAs. And the reason is, is that if you can grow your money so much, you don't have to pay any taxes on it. That's right. So let's start off from the beginning. Roth IRA versus traditional IRA. The main difference is basically how you're contributing to them. So my understanding is the limits are the same, but basically with the Roth IRA, you're contributing after tax money, whereas with the traditional IRA, you're, you're contributing pre-tax money. So I guess there's benefits and drawbacks to both. So first let's look at the traditional IRA, which I personally don't like as much, um, but what happens is, is you can't contribute actually to a Roth IRA once you're making over a certain income limit, which I think is somewhere in the $120,000 ballpark. Now there are some other like backdoor ways to get money into a Roth IRA, even if you're making over that income limit. But again, I'm not gonna touch on that, but feel free to look it up. So the income limit, that's probably the first thing. If you're making over $120,000, I believe, you can only contribute to a traditional IRA and not a Roth IRA. Now, pre-tax versus post-tax money. So basically what that means is if you make $100,000 a year and the IRA contribution limit is $6,000, you're saying, well, I make $100,000, but I'm gonna reduce my tax basis. So instead of being taxed on my $100,000 income, I'm gonna reduce it to $94,000 and only pay taxes on $94,000 because that $6,000 I'm gonna to contribute to my IRA. Now this would be a traditional IRA. Um, and the reason for this is that people wanna lower their tax basis. They owe less taxes now and they can uh, contribute that money into that IRA and then grow it from there. However, when you go to withdrawal down the road, when you retire, I think it's 59 and a half is the minimum age to start doing withdrawals, you then have to pay taxes at that point. So you're gonna be taxed on that money later on rather than up front. Now, the drawback to that is, say that $6,000 grows to be $600,000, well, you're gonna get taxed on that $600,000. So you're gonna end up paying, even if you take out like small contributions, and say you're able to do that over a long period of time and you're doing the minimum withdrawal so you have the lowest tax bracket, you're still probably paying 15 to 20% in taxes on that $600,000 that you slowly withdraw. Now, if you withdraw it in a larger chunks, well, you would just pay higher taxes because my understanding is that IRA withdrawals, when you're paying those taxes, it's sort of taxed at, uh, as income, right? So if you pulled out 100,000 of that a year, it'd be as if you were making $100,000 in income. So my problem with doing a traditional IRA is that, well, I'd rather just pay taxes on the $6,000 than on the $600,000 because I'm gonna save so much money. So that goes to the next point, a Roth IRA. So this is something I've contributed to actually only once. Um, and I contributed, I believe the limit was 5,500 at the time. So I put in the full $5,500. Um, and the benefit to this is, you just basically take money out of your bank account. You've already paid taxes on this money. You just take money from your bank account. You put it into the Roth IRA. You're good to go. But what happens is that $5,500 that I con contributed, I can grow that to be $600,000. And I don't have to pay any taxes, which means I actually get that full $600,000. Once I turn 59 and a half, start doing withdrawals, I don't pay taxes on any of that money. I also don't have to worry about short-term, long-term capital gains, anything like that. So I can buy and sell options, stocks, whatever, and don't have to think about the tax consequences of any of them, which for me is super important because in my Roth IRA, the way I treat it is it's sort of a long-term investment horizon. And because I have such a long time ahead of me since I'm only 29 years old right now, I wanna take more risks and more risks entail smaller positions 
but with higher multiple returns. So I actually like to leverage options trading within my Roth IRA, which you can do through companies like Fidelity. So I can trade options in my Roth IRA and get leverage so I can have better returns. Now I obviously know my risk to the downside as well, so everything is sort of strategic in that sense. But same thing with uh, with stocks. I can, you know, I'll be like, okay, I'll, I'll allocate $500 here and $500 there on potential stocks that, you know, they're not Apples or Microsofts or Amazons of the world, but maybe small EV companies that have done really well in the last year that are gonna provide me much better returns than something else would because I don't have any tax consequences. So if I make 500% returns on my money, I don't have to pay any taxes. So that's why I really love Roth IRAs versus traditional IRAs. Now I should contribute more to them. However, I've been funneling a lot of my money into other things, um, whether that's needing it for you know mortgage payments because I've had a weird last three years. 2018, I was um, unemployed for about three quarters of that. I did a coding boot camp, then I started working, then I was actually employed for all of 2019, and then 2020, I was actually I was furloughed at the end of 2019 into 2020 then lost my job, was out of work until about July, and then finally started working at the end of 2020. So it's been a weird tax year, so I haven't contributed more to my Roth IRA. However, I've grown my Roth IRA since I contributed that $5,500, I think in 2017, about 10X, 10X, yeah, to, to over $50,000, which is pretty crazy. But the best part is, I can take that $50,000 out when I turn 59 and a half, I can start doing con or, uh, withdrawals from that account and pay zero taxes, meaning that 50,000 is my 50,000. Whereas if you do a traditional IRA, yes, you save some taxes now, but then down the road, you have to pay taxes on that $50,000 and that just sounds terrible to me. So I hope that's kind of helpful during tax season, which we are entering right now. Uh, if you are looking into making contributions, make sure to do it into a Roth IRA versus a traditional IRA. Uh, because the tax benefits, especially down the road, are that much more advantageous, at least in my mind, and that's why I personally like to leverage that. Now, the same thing can be looked at with 401ks, there's traditional 401ks and Roth 401ks, however, not all companies offer Roth 401ks, but you might as well ask, see if it's an option, because for me, if I have a company that does any sort of matching for a 401k, I always try to do the Roth option if it's available, and they'll still match in there, and I don't have to pay taxes on that in the long run. So. For me, the Roth option makes so much more sense. Um, however, you know, see see with what your what institution you're opening with that with. For example, Fidelity, I really liked because it was a Roth IRA that I could trade stocks, some OTC stocks even, and options. Uh, and for me, that was huge. So there's obviously a lot of offerings out there. So do your own research. But I hope this was somewhat helpful and sort of distinguish the differences between a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA because the differences down the road can be huge. Not having to pay taxes if you can grow that account to $500,000, $500, a million dollars, whatever it is, if you didn't have to pay taxes on that, that is insane. So for me, Roth IRA it is, definitely for the win. Um, but do your own research, look into the investment choices. But again, it always helps to look into all the options out there because sometimes until you realize that there's something better, you just go with what's available. So for me, once I found the Roth IRA option, that is pretty much the only route I've been, well, I guess I only contributed once, but either way, hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, it would really help me out, I would really appreciate it. And until next time, thanks for watching.